Okay, so hi everyone uh, in Berlin tonight. Um, today we present uh, my project called uh, Compass or CO Pass, as you will see <laughs> why. Uh, and it's pretty much, um, I call it a modern sound soundscape uh, navigation machine. Uh, and before I jump into the project itself, I would like to maybe give a little bit of background of myself. Uh, I'm a socio-cultural anthropologist and sound artist. Uh, I was born and raised in Bogota, Colombia. I'm a current student of a master in design and computation that is done bo uh, by both University of the Arts and Technic University uh, of Berlin. And I also work at the Design Research Lab in Berlin. This is a laboratory for experimental design and design as a research method, uh, as well as a research medium uh, that reflects on digital society. Uh, and the project, actually the project uh, Compass, which is the one I, that I will present uh, today, uh, has been and still is developed within the framework of politics of machines. And that is one of the projects that takes place in, in the Design Research Lab in Berlin that is directed by uh, Michel Christensen and Florian Conrad. Uh, I think that in both of these places, uh, like in the master and also in the uh, lab, I have encountered in both design and critical making different mediums towards a practical development an embodiment of many of the inquiries raised from social sciences approaches. And as you will see, uh, this project is an example of this. So I would like to begin shortly with this uh, short tale from Jorge Luis Borges, uh, which I have chosen to, to introduce the, the overall project. Uh, and it says, uh, it's called On Exactitude on, in Science, and it says, In that empire, the art of cartography attained such perfection that the map of a single province occupied the entirety of a city, and the map of the empire, the entirety of a province. In time, those unconscionable maps no longer satisfied, and the cartographer's guilds struck a map of the empire whose size was that of the empire, and which coincided point for point with it. Uh, the following generations, who were not so fond of the study of cartography as their forebears had been, saw that that vast map was useless, and not without some pitilessness was it that they delivered it up to the inclemencies of sun and winters. In the deserts of the West still today, there are tattered ruins of that map, inhabited by animals and beggars. In all the land, there is no other relic of the disciplines of geography. Um, so I chose this uh, short tale uh, because I believe that um, it talks about the project and its inquiries upon a supposedly objective scientific rationalist modes of knowledge production, which pretend to describe reality through a one-to-one -one relation and under its own aspects. Uh, for Borges, it seems that the more achieved such a comprehensiveness program is, the more it seems to walk away of what could be an explanation of reality. It becomes, in the end, rather a replica. And on Borges, this raises the question of its usefulness. Uh, the case with, with cartography, which is actually super important and relevant for, for this project, is rather interesting because uh, its primary objective pretensions have been surpassed by a rather dynamic and ever-changing uh, maps. And in turn, there has been also innovative and interesting proposals, such as the one of critical cartography or also post-representational post uh, cartography. Once, uh, what seems to be more relevant for, for this project, for Compass, is that every representation of the world, in every, sorry, in every representation of the world, there is a selection on the criteria that is relevant towards its own end. So it's worth raising the question, what are the criteria selected towards reality's representation under a scientific rationalist scope? And most importantly, I would ask, I would also ask, and the project asks, what is the criteria left aside? 
uh, how faithful are these representations to reality. So as we will see, Compass deals with the question on how to reinvent cartography as a rather dynamic exercise that, that has into account sensorial experience of space as a way towards this reinvention and in general knowledge production. So more concretely, <laughs> the main inquiry throughout this project is the one of spatial experience and its homogenization. Uh, this starts with the idea that the lenses uh, through which we understand, through which we represent and also experience reality seem to be stranded on a Western dualist ontology and scientific rationalist most, uh, modes of knowledge production, which are often expressed in binary opposition, oppositions and divisions such as nature culture, nature technology, among others. Uh, and these ones ha have long uh, become dominant through a so-called process of globalization, which marginalizes beyond Western ways of thinking about the relation between humans and their environment. Uh, what is also interesting for the project is that this is not ju just manifested through representation acts, but these act, this, this representational acts have also corresponding material repercussions. So Compass uh, main subject matter are urban models or cities as we know it, as the consolidation of a standardized and homogenizing experience and organization of the space. And these are analogous and make part of the process under which Western ontology expands around the globe. Uh, these models of spatial organization, or organization, these urban models have as in the core, at their core, notions of progress, of development, among others. Uh, and these will have established modes of life, of living, that are directly related to the, the, to the current environmental crisis. And for the case, for this project, pollution is chosen. I, I, I decided to talk about pollution as example to talk about this homogenization. That in the end is a direct repercussion and one of the most indicative manifestations of, of anthropocentric capitalist industrialization and Western notion of progress. Mm. So uh, Compass aims towards a di diversification of knowledge production methods uh, with which we can develop innovative insights and ways to understand social cultural phenomena. It looks upon the mentioned before criteria that has been left aside when creating, when, pro, when producing knowledge, especially within scientific rationalist knowledge uh, frameworks. It seems that, scienti uh, that uh, sensorial experience doesn't seem to have a very relevant uh, role within this framework. So Compass refers uh, to the sensorial experience and more specifically to the audible sense to, to sound as a medium towards uh, a reacquisition, uh, to reacquiring uh, the sensibility towards uh, social cultural phenomena. So in this case, as it was mentioned before, uh, we talk about pollution whose relevance is trivialized by a frame, frame of reference within which information overload affects the discernment and awareness we have towards it. Uh, and these approaches have been developed analogically to practical exercises, as the one uh, presented in this slide, uh, that have as a main inquiry the relation between sound and space. Uh, so in this case, in this particular example that, that I'm showing here, uh, the question of how sound differs across different spaces was developed by the analysis of field recordings of different spaces with a spectrogram, which is a visual way of representing the loudness of a signal over time at various frequencies present in a particular waveform. So I took two samples, as these two samples specifically as a rather indicative example. Uh, on the left on the left hand side, uh, we see the spectrogram of a field recording of Grunewald, which is a forest and natural reserve out of out west of Berlin. And these visible uh, colored lines are the spectrogram representation of, of some bird sounds. On the right side, 
uh, we see the still image of the spectrogram with the, with the field recordings of Potsdamer Platz. That's uh, in the center of Berlin, in the middle of the city. So uh, these exercises that were also this process towards uh, what today compasses uh, gave also ideas or hints, uh, terms, if you may, such as sensorial cartographies and mapping sound. And although these images seem to be self-explanatory, the idea of sensorial representation of exp uh, spatial experience was taken further. Um, and the way to take this further was looking upon the qualitative characteristics of the given soundscapes. Mm, so having this into account, as well as the fact that, that these representations uh, in the end are some or have some qualities that can reflect social, economical, and cultural aspects, the project scope focused in the most qualitative char characteristics of these soundscapes. So for example, the urban locations had in common features such as those uh, from machinery, industry, sounds, traffic, etc. And they all represent some kind of notes along the Western lifestyle chain. They, all, they are all relevant and play rather a significant role in the above the discussed phenomenon, which is pollution. So beyond an attempt to depict pollution throughout a supposedly objective field recordings, pollution became, in this project, uh, a medium through which a given soundscape uh, is to be heard. Uh, and this is the result. Uh, this is uh, one of the first pro prototypes of, 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 of COMPASS which is in the most concrete terms, a machine designed to navigate uh, modern city soundscapes. And as you can see, there is one hole, there, there are two holes, and in the center there is um, an air, air quality sensor. So uh, one of the hole, the left side hole is an input and the other one is an output. And it basically works with the help of a field recorder uh, microphone and the device the device takes an incoming uh, sonic signal and it alters it in real time through a sound synthesis method called uh, granular granular synthesis which samples and splits the signal the signal that is incom the incoming signal in in real time into small pieces of around 1 to 50 milliseconds and for these they are referred to as grains this here is uh, a second prototype, which was uh, done in plexiglass, and you can see the inner part as well. Uh, and basically, the quantity of grains being generated uh, in real time, uh, again, is proportional to the quantity of CO2 particles at the location in question. And this, CO, this quantity of CO2 particles is detected by an air quality sensor uh, that is integrated in the, into the device, as I mentioned it before. So this is the prototype, more or less. This is a more, um, the most concrete explanation. And basically, this, this, this device or this prototype at this point um, allows not only to hear the mere sonic characteristics of a given space, but also to listen to to these spaces through the contamination present in them, the pollution present in them. Uh, with the prototype, with the device, uh, one is ultimately listening to the pollution of the places in question. Uh, the quantity of CO2 particles in these places is represented in the alteration of the soundscapes throughout these called sonic grain, uh, grains. And the quantity of the of, of the former of CO2 particles, as mentioned above, is proportional to the to these uh, sonic grains which are altering the sound. So it allows the experiencing and understanding of social phenomena, in this case pollution, and with it it creates uh, further questions in regard to this to in regards to this phenomena. Um, I think of it as a tool that enables the user developing new ways of awareness throughout sensorial experience, throughout the senses. I have put it in this slide some 
uh, small audio just to show you a short sample on how this works. But, um, yes. Okay, so that was one uh, short sample. And just to finish, I would like to um, uh, end this presentation with uh, some of what I think are, are relevant reflections uh, on what has, has been this process so far, uh, which I like to think as an ongoing process. And as I said, this, these are prototypes that, are, that are, uh, work more as a, as a method of research and that are still, uh, as I said, uh, a process. Uh, and some of these reflections are that uh, the technologies at society's uh, disposal are determinant and they may uh, widen or narrow or experiencing, experiencing uh, an understanding of reality. So it is in this sense that design is a discipline of, of an ontological nature, I would say. Uh, the design of an object or objects in general, it goes beyond uh, the, their mere utilitarian function. These are objects that are rather containers, transmitters of meanings and values which manifest throughout uh, the interaction among individuals and also among individuals and their environment. So objects and technologies influence and model social practices and beliefs they are vehicles uh, of being in the world where, with which reality is ultimately recreated. And furthermore, at the core of the project is the purpose of diversifying the means uh, through which knowledge is produced, as, as you heard me saying a couple of times. And this is uh, this also um, connected to the idea that, that even since colonial times, so to say, West, Western uh, rationalist science has been posed as the only valid method towards knowledge production. Uh, the issue m would be more the fact that this is neglecting any other knowledge produced outside this framework to be also posed or is not posed in the same way. Uh, so there is some sort of epistemological injustice, I would say. And it has remained uh, until the present. Uh, and then COMPASS also calls upon uh, the territorialization of the methods of knowledge production. And more specifically, it refers to sensorial experience, as you've seen, as a mean towards uh, the divers diversification and rediscover uh, on the, of the ways we understand and experience the relations, the relations among ourselves and with our environment. So sensorial experiences is not opposed to, but complementary to, to scientific knowledge. Mm, and just to close, uh, I would say that COMPASS is also an exercise of post-representational cartography or critical cartography, if you may, uh, in which, again, sensorial experience is a criteria that is a key towards the mapping and the exploration of a space 
by acknowledging that the task of representing a space can be never objective because of its uh, dynamic complexity, ever-changing dynamic compl uh, complexity, actually. But nonetheless, it embraces the task in a creative way uh, through which we diversify the understanding of the space. And thank you very much. Thank you, Pablo. And I think that, um, is he still there? Can you hear me? Oh, you're there. Excellent. Yes. Um, and I think this would be, what would be really interesting is, are you able to join us in the, any of the brainstorming that we're doing? You know, we're doing brainstorming sessions during the day yes. and you have a, a link. And um, I think particularly in some of the th issues you've raised here with your talk, um, we have a satellite of, in Mexico City from the Universidad Nacional Autónoma de Mexico, uh -huh. and uh, they are the art and science group, and they are addressing some of the issues that you have raised, and in some of the work that they did last year, they sort of touched upon it. And I just wonder if you have chance to join us, um, even sort of you know at a distance, you will, you might yeah. actually find some interesting topics to discuss with them and connect with them. I mean, they are just one example, but it immediately occurred to me Absolutely. that you will get yes. on. I would, I would be super happy to join and I will do it for sure. Brilliant. Thank and you very uh, much. Yeah, brilliant. And, and do, yeah, as I say, do join in and also um, do follow what happens for the rest of the week because obviously if anything evolves, do you have access also to the Miro board where we are exploring ideas? I do. Yes. Fantastic. Yes. So in that yes. sense, you could actually also, if you have any further thoughts and ideas that connect to some of the other things that are evolving on there, you can contribute. That would be really great. We'll do. We'll do. Totally. Wonderful. Thanks so much, yes. Pablo. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Have a good evening. Bye. Thanks.